I'm going to get a little obscure today with this topic of Amex automation system called SuperTrue, which was developed, I believe, in the late 1980s, but was used throughout their product line extensively in the 1990s. Amex was known for making high-end analog consoles for recording studios in the UK and until they were bought out by Soundcraft. In this video, I'm not going to talk about the automation aspect of the SuperTrue program because, well, it, there's, it's very limited. All it can do is control faders and mutes, and a DAW can do that a lot better and can also do way more in terms of automation. But SuperTrue can do a lot more than just automation, and that's what we're going to get into in this video today. My favorite feature is probably the virtual dynamics, but arguably the most useful feature is the total recall that the console can do. And it can do this with the aid of Rupert Neve's voice. So yes, there is spoken word coming out of the console telling you what knobs to turn and what to do if you choose to press the button to engage his voice. Well, let's get into it. There's a setup feature within SuperTrue where you can configure it for whatever mixing board you have. You just tell it what mixing board you're using and how many channels are on your mixing board and is your console fitted with virtual dynamics or not and what channels are they on so you have to set up the program for your console obviously it can work with a lot of different consoles it has things integrated into it without physical knobs so that means instantaneous recall and i'm talking about the virtual dynamics specifically so with those you have just a whole array of different processors such as compressors limiters gates expanders and auto panner there's a bunch of really cool powerful tools in here that have the ability for you to save presets and you can have full recallability of these things pretty much instantaneously when you open a session the system also offers grouping of tracks. You can have up to 10 groups, which can be assigned to have any fader on the console be the master for that group, including or discluding, whichever you choose, one of the tracks within the group. Okay, now that I have my partition 22 selected, that just happens to be where I saved the mix that I want to pull up. I go over here to file and load old title. This will take a little bit after I get it selected, the A drive, so I'm going to just click load. Give it a second. Now that the mix is loaded, you can see a lot of different stuff. Down here are some numbers. Those indicate groups. There's channels that are grouped together so that one fader controls many. That is done within this program of SuperTrue. You can access that menu by holding down Control Z. Strange, right? Yeah, Control N actually toggles back. So if I hit Control N now, it toggles back. Control Z brings up the group window. From this window down here, you can see the rest of the channels by using the arrow keys. I'm going to press the right arrow key to see more channels. And you can label your tracks here too. This is only visible on this screen though when this window is up. Bass amp is how I have that one labeled. You can group by clicking on a given channel. Like down here we have six selected up and uh, two right there. I'm just going to use this bass track, these two. I'm going to group them together right now. If I left mouse click, I can select what group I want it to be. You can select only one group per each one and you have up to, what is it, 10 options? Yes. So 10 possible groups. If you want to select two tracks, you do it like that, okay? Those are both on group one right now. And you'll need a group one master track, which you would create by right mouse clicking. I am going to right mouse click here, and now that is the master for the two of them. Any track can be the master. It could be one of the tracks that you have currently grouped, or it could be another track that is currently unused. So you just right mouse click again to toggle that off, left mouse click to take it out of the group. But let's say we want this group and we want this track to be the master. Just right mouse click. There you go. Now that's the master for these three. These faders cannot be controlled with a mouse. They can only be controlled physically by the mixing board movements. All right, the title is loaded for this Malamore track. Now I'm going to have to load the mix. So we go to mix and load mix. I guess the letter M is a shortcut. You can save uh, mixes right here and recall them in the same manner. So there's only one option right now, but you could have multiple options for different levels of the mix. If you want to go back to some 
point at mid mix where you were very happy or whatever click load and it's that quick it, it is for the faders so that's what it did if we go to internal source and hit uh, F3 for a moment yep that's what that did and then hit stop all of the faders are now represented where they should be by the blue lines but the actual physical fader location is at all the way down infinity negative bajillion as long as the fader isolate switch is not engaged right now when i press play on the audio end the mixing board will respond as if the faders were where the blue lines are indicating in order to change that so that the faders actually are doing what you want them to do and not doing that then we would have to change the mode up here to be switches only and now the faders will be whatever but let's say we want to get some faders back to where they used to be well that's part of the recall that we can actually do at this point but we're going to do a full recall of the entire mixing board not just the faders so the first thing we're going to do here is go to options and recall settings this will bring in the recall stuff okay so it's going to start at channel one and scan through all the channels there's a representation on the screen of what's going on what needs to change if something's solid gray you're totally good that's where it should be however if there are buttons pushed in with the little red thing that means it hasn't happened yet and you need to do it so there's a bunch of things that need to happen here this is the equalizer section and the mix path we're going to go through that right now but before we do anything more we can select some other parameters such as the accuracy at which you want to recall it's uh, not a big difference in my opinion between medium and fine but fine will take longer to get the exact position if you at this point do not press OK if you instead hit enter on the numpad of the keyboard you will get the voice of Rupert Neve playing out of the system and that is coming back on a cable that's attached to the mixing board it's basically an XLR connection and it's an audio feed I have it running into channel 44 on my console as just a permanent thing right into that mic preamp let's take a listen to what it sounds like when Rupert Neve tells us what to do track one and two track one and two track one and two Track one and two, okay. Track five and six. Track five, okay. Track eleven and twelve, okay. Mix two, track. Mix two, track. Mix, okay. Channel pan up, okay. High mid frequency up. High mid frequency up. Slow, okay. High mid gain slowly up. High, okay, low, mid, frequency, up, low, mid, frequency, up, slowly, up, slowly, up, okay, low, mid, gain, slowly, down, okay, high, pass, filter, okay, eek, okay, mix, two, stereo, okay, track, one, and two, Okay, track 5 and okay, track 11 and okay, mix 2, track okay, high, mid, frequency, up, oh, down, S okay, high, mid, gain, slowly, down, okay, low, mid, frequency, up, up, down, oh, up, down, slowly, down, slowly, down. Okay, low, mid, gain, down. O up, okay, low, frequency. Okay, EQ, in, okay, mix, pan, slowly, up, down, down, slowly, down. Okay, mix, two, stereo, mix, two, okay, track, one, and two. Track At this one. point, we have match mode selected. I pressed play with the F3 key for a couple seconds just to bring up the fader positions in Super True. We're in match mode, and now using the read write select switch, I can toggle into fader recall. Press it one time. The green light's flashing, 
indicating that the fader should be turned up. Whoops, I went too far. Now it's flashing red. Now they're both flashing. That means you have the correct location for this fader. Press the read, write, select button one more time and you're done. Move on to the next track. And it is that simple. Okay. I just finished normaling the board and I'm going to save this as a preset session and mix in super true so that next time I want to normal the board, it's pretty easy to confirm. And all I have to do is under options, go to store setting. And you can name it something. You have 10 options for any given mix. And then hit enter once you've done that. And it will scan every channel to see what's up. All right, back to Super True. You can see I've got Fader 4 up. That's my microphone right now. If I go over to the console, and I'll try to do that right now, I'll turn down the fader just so that you can see that it is actually interactive, but you can't control it with the mouse. From this point, if I go over to channel 4 and I right mouse click on the number, the virtual dynamics window comes up. It's bypassed. There's nothing there right now, but if you want to put something here, it's pretty easy to do. You just press the space bar. All right. Now, the the virtual dynamics window is open. On the left hand side are some presets that I've saved, but there's also the ability to save quite a few presets and then you have banks of presets as well. We're not going to worry about any of that right now, but that is definitely a very cool feature to save your settings if you wanted to quickly get them in the future. On the right hand side here are all the different options for the virtual dynamics, which is actually, you know, Surprisingly, more than I would have thought, just based on the age of this program, we're talking early 90s. They might have even started making it in the late 80s, to be honest. But all of these dynamics are very usable. Some of them are extra special, and I'm going to try to just go over a few of them right now. My favorite is definitely just the regular compressor. If I click on that, it comes up like a plugin. You can see the signal right here, my voice. And over here is gain reduction. This is just like a really go like go to kind of compressor for me. It's so flexible yet simple enough that I can quickly dial things in. To turn it on, you just engage this switch. I'm going to need to adjust the ratio, otherwise it won't do anything. And now you can see it's doing quite a bit. So I'm going to just back off on that. And as you adjust it, you can see it comes in. I can play around with it a little bit, but. I don't have headphones on right now, so I'm just kind of flying without hearing this. I'm guessing probably a slower attack will be better, slower release. That's the knee control. You have soft knee or hard knee. Uh, you can do makeup gain of up to 10 dB right here, which does go beyond what the fader can do. So let's just bypass real quick. And that's with the dynamics off. And that's with the dynamics on. And once again, like I'm not actually even listening to what I'm recording here. I don't have headphones on and the speakers are off. So I'm just kind of guessing. I hope it sounds cool, but that should be enough gain reduction for you to actually hear what's going on. If you really want, I could squash the shit out of it right here. But yeah, it definitely works. If you wanted to have a stereo compressor, and there's plenty of reasons why you would, you would hit the, the link button. But thing to note is that all of the the stereo linking capability channels are basically in pairs of one and two, three and four, five and six, and so on. It doesn't go any other way. You can't have two and three. You can't have like six and nine. We're now linked with channels three and four. We're going to head over to the console to take a look at what that looks like, but I wanted to also talk about a couple other things here. There is this key switch, which, you know, is obviously for a sidechain key input but it does not work on my console because it's not integrated into that design. You would find that on some other models of AMAC consoles. I think maybe the Mozart has that feature. I'm not exactly sure which models offer it, but I know that the big series does not. So that is just like one little thing that you can't use. And I think it's probably the only thing you can't use in the super true software with a big by Langley. If you click on this switch, it is going to remove the low frequencies from the detector circuit. So it's basically a low frequency cut 
and that way the compressor now is no longer responding to any kind of plosives that my voice would create. It's also not going to respond to any kind of sub-frequency stuff at all. So that's a cool little feature that's built in right here. You can see the dynamics are absolutely responding to my voice, and it's working just fine. Three and four are linked together, and basically you're seeing the gain reduction with those meters. They don't really give you too much of an indication of what's going on, but you can at least see that there's compression happening. Red doesn't really mean that you're blowing the thing up. It just means that there's a decent amount of co compression going on to as much as a lot. It could be anywhere in between a low amount of com compression to quite a bit. The yellow light just indicates that some compression is actually happening, and green just tells you that the device is on or that the compressor is active. So doesn't really work like a gain reduction meter typically does. It's just telling you something though, which is pretty cool. One of the greatest things about the virtual dynamics is that it's instantly recallable on the entire console. So when I open up a session and I load a mix, it's going to instantly load all of the virtual dynamics onto the console. I mean, it's not an instant. It takes maybe 30 seconds or something, but it's instant recall where I don't have to physically turn knobs or do anything. That's also true for the groups. The groups are all controlled within the software, so that's going to be instant recall. And you're going to also have recall over all of the fader positions. If you have it set to just play back in the, with the mode set to read, write, update, then playing back will give you the sound of the entire console mixed, even though you haven't adjusted any faders. It overrides the faders. So you do have quite a bit of recall that happens without you really needing to do anything. However, yeah, the majority of it, you do have to physically turn knobs, but it's made easy with Rupert Neve. So now I'm gonna right mouse click and bring this up again. Let's say we don't want this compressor on here, or maybe you wanna do something different. You hit the space bar and it brings us back to this window. If we just hit cancel at this point, we're not going to lose anything. We're going to go right back to where we were, uh, unless you wanted to save this as a patch. You know, that's another option. But you can click on any one of these other things, and it's going to give you a completely different plugin. You cannot stack plugins unless you're going to be stacking channel strips. So you could actually route the output of one channel to the input of another and get multiple virtual dynamics. But of course, you're getting multiple everything else too. So it's just one, and that's it unless you have a combo plugin like the dual compressor. That's a pretty crazy one. There's also the dual, where is it? The dual compressor and the other one is the expand compress. Yeah, there's two different ones that give you dual um, uh, options, I guess you would say, or dual virtual dynamics in one. Let's check out the dual compressor. Yeah, it's it's a mouthful right there. That's a lot of knobs for a 1990s compressor on a console, right? If the console had to have that many knobs, it just wouldn't happen. I mean, <laughs> you're looking at so many options that you get because it's virtually controlled analog electronics. That's right. This is digitally controlled analog electronics. Okay. Uh, let's see a limiter and I'm going to engage that. Once again, you got to turn up your, your ratio. I'm not so much sure how different this is from the compressor other than it's got some different controls and the ratio does go to 10 to 1 instead of 6 to 1. So I guess it's doing something. Let's see if I can get it to, to work for us here. Check, 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 check. Yeah, well, maybe you need a hotter signal for this thing to do anything. I would say that's probably the truth. Um, considering I'm not getting anything, uh, negative five. Yeah, I'd have to say this is probably more meant for like on a, on a two track, like a, a drum bus or something where you're hitting it a little bit harder because with a spoken word here, it's not doing jack shit. Let me see if I can turn up the mic preamp for a little bit and get something different happening. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, there we are. Yeah, so I had to like pretty much slam it in order for this thing to even work. But now it's going pretty good and check one, two. Oh, yeah, you got to really hit that thing hard. I don't know what the M is supposed to mean. Milliseconds? Yeah, I guess. Kind of a strange way of writing it. But, yeah, that's what they did in the in the, in the good old days, right? You can have a, a nice long release of four seconds if you choose. I like the, the hold feature because that's actually something that you don't find on the compressor. That's a cool feature. You can kind of tune the, the sound of this compressor or limiter to have a different kind of reaction. It's kind of like an LA-2A, you know? The LA-2A has a bit of a hold to it, so 
you could probably get something like that with a slower release time. Let's just say like 5 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. That would be 100 milliseconds right there. So it's something less than that. I don't know, 75 milliseconds. That's probably good, right? And uh, let's see. I mean, I got this thing hammered. But it probably sounds like there's more compression than it's indicating on the graph right here. I've found that it's very inaccurate, but I mean, you know, whatever. What do you what do you expect? I mean, pretty high tech for the era, right? Yeah, I mean, in the '90s, this is pretty badass. There is also a, a gate which I've used a bit. I like the uh, the super gate. You know, the super gate is actually this is a really cool thing because it can do some interesting things. If you wanted to read about this stuff, the the manual does kind of give you some information about these different things. For To see the manual, you actually cannot be in a session. You've got to just get out of sessions altogether. <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. But this thing is pretty cool because, yeah, it is a gate, but you can also add, like, some attack to the signal. It's different from the SPL Transient Designer, but it does something that kind of sounds similar to my ear because with this DB peak function, you can actually dial in like a little bit of extra smack on the top end uh, when, when the sound comes in to kind of give you like more of an attack. It's compensating for cutting off the attack. You got auto controls, all different stuff. If we go into the manual, we can really see what this is all about. Let's try to do that right now. The virtual dynamics are really cool because the interface looks like a plugin and it really kind of works like one too. A really old school plugin, but that's cool because that's before plugins came out. So this might actually be the world's first plugin. And what it is is actually just a, a digital controller. It's not actually a plugin. It's just controlling the analog electronics on any given channel strip. They had this in the 80s. Can you believe that? I mean, just cool stuff. If you are interested in learning more about the AMAC Big, or about the Super True program, let me know in the comments and I may do another video in the future to address anything that I might miss here.